What's up everyone, it's your boy Norm Brad 89 here bringing you another video and for today's video we are going to be on to the next installment in the Puppet Master franchise, that's Puppet Master The Legacy and this one is quite infamous for being pretty hated. I've noticed most lists they have that people have, have the rankings for the Puppet Master franchise, this one's typically in the bottom three. We're going to get into some reasons why. So today we're going to talk about my positives, my negatives, and the rating and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to send you all home. So let's get into this video. Roll it. So today we're going to talk about Puppet Master The Legacy, which is the eighth installment in this franchise. And for most people, this is one that's widely talked about as being kind of hated just because it's, I'm going to be right off, straight off with you. This is like 75% old footage and then about 25% new footage. So there's only about maybe like at most like 20 minutes of actual new footage that they shot for this film and the rest of it is all flashback stuff so that's i know one reason why people kind of really hate this film so let's get into the story right away as we go back to the bodega inn and this time we're here to talk about it's uh peter hertz that's the character's name and he is actually the character that was rescued by toulon at the end of toulon's revenge the third film the young boy and he ended up getting the serum like the secret passed on to him and the puppets and stuff like that so he's in the basement of the Bodega Inn with Six Shooter, we have Blade there, Jester, and all that kind of stuff. But then Agent McLean breaks in, and she has some stuff that she wants to get off her chest, but she also wants to get information from Peter. So that's kind of the crux of our story. So let's get into the positives now. Now, for me, one key positive is that this film actually feels very in the same universe and in the same realm as the other Puppet Master films. Like, compared to Curse and Retro Puppet Master, I think this film feels very close to home in all that kind of stuff, and mainly because we do recall a lot of the scenes from Puppet Master 1, 2, and 3, and there's a lot from Puppet Master 4 and 5, so if you're really into those films, which I am one of those people that is into those films... I like seeing those scenes again and rehashing them and they kind of go a good way about it as Agent McLean is trying to get information from Peter and she threatens his life and instead of, you know, kind of, you know, really giving her what she wants, he ends up playing tapes that have Toulon's voice and Toulon kind of goes through the story talking about how he discovered the puppets, what things happened and transpired over the previous like five to six films basically. So we get to kind of rehash all those films. And another positive for me is that even though the new footage is only about 20 minutes, at least they give us footage that has two actors in it that I think actually deliver on their roles and it works for the concept of what they're trying to do and accomplish with those scenes. The two actors I think do a very fair job at their, you know, what they're asked to do in this film. Another thing I love is that we have the typical, you know, we have Six Shooter back and like all that kind of stuff and Blade, but one thing that's kind of a negative, we're gonna throw in a mix and negative right away right now as we're talking about the puppets is they use a lot of stock footage footage that has already been shot of the puppets and they're showing them like they're in the facility or in the place the building with them it's basically a one room act type movie and the only other shots we get are like shots from previous films and stuff so it's in the basement where peter's talking to mclean and she's threatening him and they're going back and forth the puppets are there but even the shots that we see of just the puppets alone sometimes it might be a shot you've seen from a previous film so this is definitely very low budget but they do try to tell a new story with it and that's what i like is they go the route of agent mclean actually talks about rick in this one and how she got the journal from rick and he wouldn't give it to her so she killed him so at least we get confirmation about rick's character from puppet master four and five they actually acknowledge that and i love that aspect of this film that this film does go for a stretch as it tries to tie all the previous films together. Does it necessarily work? Does it fit continuity wise? You know, not necessarily 100%, but at least this film does go for a bold, like, you know, swing for the fences type move. 
And for me, I think for being a film that has mostly old footage and like I know I'm keen to the old footage and some people aren't into like rehashing that kind of stuff, especially if you're not a fan of this franchise and you're binging it, you're not going to freaking love this movie. This will not be one of your favorites. But for me, it's a more welcome home, you know, like closer to home, like kind of film, you know what I mean, of the franchise that I like. So I do like this one definitely better than Curse and not better than Retro, though. Retro, I have a soft spot for that one. But like I said, this one is still, to me, at least they try to tell a new story. They have some new actors in it. I know it's only about 20 minutes of footage, but at least they try to swing for the fences and they go for it and try to connect all the films continuity wise so puppet master of the legacy it has a lot going for it like i said but has a lot going against it as well because they just try to stretch it and really try to go for it and you know sometimes that could hurt the film and like I said you know certain things very very low budget at this point we're realizing that you know they're able to reuse footage and all that kind of stuff because they don't have enough money to finish out certain things or reshoot certain things but yeah still puppet master legacy in my book this film is going to get a five out of ten so average still average rating the reason it mainly gets the average rating is because we still get a lot of footage of the puppets doing some really badass things from the previous five films i give a lot of respect to this film for the fact that they acknowledge rick and they tell us what happened to his character even though agent mclean killed him off screen and i would have much appreciated to see it but yeah that's what i mean at least they acknowledged it and they like go for it so there's certain things that i very much like i said look up to and respect about this film but it's not necessarily a great puppet master film i gotta be honest like I said puppet master one through five is kind of the very, very best retro soft spot curse. Very bad. But now we're going to be getting into next the Access Trilogy. So that's three films and they all are like kind of a central storyline that takes place throughout the three films. So that's our next journey. And then even a fourth film because Blade Iron Cross still has a same continuity with the Access Trilogy. So those are going to be the next films that we are going to be tackling. So make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing because we got a lot of content coming. But most importantly, I want y'all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.